So here we have the Sega SC3000 uh, home computer. So the SC3000 uh, was a computerized version, if you like, of the original SG1000 console that uh, Sega did in 1983. It was their very first console and uh, they did a computerized version which outsold the console by a large amount. Now this computer is just the internals of the console with a keyboard attached and various other bits and pieces but uh, the cartridges are absolutely compatible between the console and the computer which is quite handy. Now uh, in New Zealand it was distributed by Grandstand who later went on to uh, distribute Amstrad and in Australia it was distributed by John Sands and it was very very successful in both New Zealand and Australia and also Japan but in other parts of the world where it was distributed such as Italy um, Spain and South Africa it didn't do so well in those parts of the world it was sold uh, in red and white but uh, the one we see here is the original black model with the membrane keyboard there is also another model which is the SC3000H which has a full stroke keyboard but other than that it's identical to this one now you'll see with this model here uh, up on screen I've got it booted into BASIC it didn't come with any BASIC on board so if you fire the machine up without a cartridge in it you just got a grey screen, no sound, it just looked like it was dead uh, put a cartridge in it and away it goes uh, interestingly it's a, um, a Z80 a clone processor in here running at 3.5 megahertz um, it's got a 32k ROM 16k of VRAM and 2k of RAM and the reason for the low RAM is it just needed that to boot um, any RAM that anyone needed came with a cartridge so for instance you'll see here with the basic interpreter uh, it comes with 32k of extra RAM giving the user a total of 34 uh, but that's all um, because the cartridge is being put inside the machine. Uh, now, <coughs> this model um, also came with the, as you can see here, the SJ200 uh, joystick. Um, but uh, there were some other peripherals that came with this. There was an expansion box that had a, a, a floppy drive and uh, lots of other bits and pieces, you know, printer ports and things, which uh, I don't have. But um, what we'll do is we'll dig in and have a look and, uh, and see a bit more about the SC3000. So you'll see this is the um, SC3000 just sitting unplugged. It's a full size keyboard and quite a big computer, um, all made of plastic. If we see here if I grab a ZX Spectrum and just put it out just for a bit of a size comparison, you'll see that the Sega is quite a bit bigger than the, um, than the Spectrum is. Now the cartridges You'll see here I've got two cartridges. I actually have more, but I've uh, got some game cartridges. But this is the basic cartridge with the edge connector. And this one here is the SC3000 Multicart, which uh, is the reason why I don't need all my other cartridges, because everything's on here. Um, and they all go into the connector that you'll see on the side here. So on the side of the computer you can see there's the edge connector. Now if you are restoring one of these machines that you manage to grab off somebody, you'll find that it doesn't work. And you'll plug in a cartridge, you'll get the machine turned on, and all you'll get is a grey screen and a funny hum. And the reason why is because the connector in here needs cleaning. So you need to get a piece of paper folded around a thin piece of plastic, and you just need to work it back and forward until the paper comes out clean. And, um, it can take a, quite a long time to clean the um, connector inside here, but it's essential for it to work with these cartridges. Now if we look at the view around the back, you'll see there's, uh, and if I actually tilt it up first, you'll see there's a lot of cooling. So at the very bottom of the machine there's vents in the front to pull air through. They obviously get heated through the heat sinks and things, and then out the vents at the top here above these cartridges and, and, uh, and such, so I suspect the machine does run quite warm, and it does. It's not you know, uncomfortable, but it does get quite warm. So we'll start over here. We've got the power switch and the power cord. Next here we have the two ports for the cassette. In the middle here we have a printer port and a video out port. 
of which I don't have a cable but I understand you can get a cable pretty easily made up and there's some pinouts uh, available on the internet for it um, which are quite good and then you've got the um, RF out with a signal switch um, so that's pretty cool now turning around you'll see on the side here that it has two joystick ports and here is the infamous SJ200 uh, joystick which has the joystick on top, buttons on the sides it just looks like a standard um, connector for pretty much any other, any joystick, I haven't tested it out yet <clears throat> but uh, you can plug two joysticks in and, uh, and with any sort of two player games which is, which is quite cool um, the keyboard itself um, it's a QWERTY keyboard it's a membrane keyboard need I say more however it's not all that bad the feel it does give you a little bit of feedback but I wouldn't want to use it every day but it's certainly better than an iPad screen keyboard let's put it that way so here we can see the system with the, with the keyboard and the top off and it's a pretty straightforward design actually um, so here we've got the Z80 clone which is a NEC processor we've got the ROM the RAM over the side here and then underneath this board here we've got the uh, two Texas Instruments um, co-processors so we've got the sound processor and the video processor and you can see the joystick ports over the side there the RF where the keyboard's joined in and then various other bits and pieces uh, finishing with the infamous or famous um, socket that you'll see there now if you are restoring one of these machines Resoldering the pins on that cartridge socket is a very good place to start. You will, however, have to desolder these two power points. Uh, so these pins that go to the motherboard and as the power switch, you have to desolder those before you can take the logic board out. It's just the way it is. Um, now, interestingly, about the video processor in this machine, I have just read that it's the same video processor used in the MSX standard so um, MSX ultimately killed this machine um, but uh, that just shows that it had some uh, some pretty good hardware in it so we'll boot the unit up you get a bit of a hum and then the screen will go grey a beep and then we're into the cartridge so it's booted up off the Sega uh, basic cartridge and you can see it's showing us information about the um, basic level and 26k free now if you look at the keyboard it's a pretty standard keyboard a QWERTY type keyboard with the arrow pad over the side which could be used for games it's not a bad feeling keyboard I mean you know it's not great but every time you touch a key you get a beep so you've got a space bar And I could go on, but you know, same old thing with a basic interpreter. What we'll do now is we'll put a cartridge in it and show some of the things you could do with the games. So you'll see here I'm booting up using a multi-cart. So this multi-cart is actually done in New Zealand, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can use the joystick here. I've got the joystick controller to navigate through the menus. So I'm just going to go down to some ROMs. And we'll have a go at Choplifter. So it'll just show you what Choplifter looks like on this machine and you'll notice when we play uh, the graphics are great uh, for the time but uh, also the sound's really good as well so we'll just have a look and I'll we'll boot up into Choplifter and have a quick little game. I'm not good but hey, let's go. So here we are, you'll see the familiar Sega logo and then we get the music. Uh, and once we get into the game, we get the chopper sound and then we're into some music and we're ready to go so the idea of Choplifter was that you had to go and rescue some of your uh, people on the uh, battlefield with your chopper and avoid tanks so we'll land down here and pick up these guys you'll see they're jumping into the, into the helicopter but we have to hurry because the tank will come along soon and start firing missiles at us like that 
So we land and we pick this guy up. He better run over really quickly. Oh, he got killed. Right, we'll pick him up. Right, okay, and then once you've picked up all the men, you have to take them all back to base, which will turn around and we'll fly back to base. So we'll fly back. <clears throat> you can hear the chopper noise and the music going in the background. Um, pretty easy controls with the um, joystick. And then we land it here and they all jump out. So that's Choplifter. Sega Gallagher. <clears throat> A lot of you will recognise this. So this is the game where they come in, you shoot them out, and then you'll see the ones with the sort of claws or clippers that come in. And later on in the game they will send down a little um, tractor beam and they can steal my man and then I'll have to uh, basically shoot them to get it back and they can end up with two. So here comes just a single. Oh, got me. It's kind of the first time I've played this one. But uh, just shows you some of the things that um, Sega were doing in 1983. Um, I wouldn't say that the arcade version was graphically much better than this. It's quite impressive. And there's our little tractor beam. Takes my ship away. And the first thing I'm going to do as soon as that ship comes down is shoot it and then I'll have two ships side by side with double the firepower. Ah, uh, didn't last long. So that's um, Sega Gallagher. Now the C3000 um, that I picked up has quite a bit in the box, or w with it, uh, including all the original packaging for the joystick. You can see the box there for the joystick. Got the original box for the actual computer itself. Um, got the switch that, oddly enough, looks like a lot of the switches that were shipped in the 80s, but this one's got the Sega branding on it, which is interesting. Um, the basic cartridge came in its own packaging, so you can see here that the basic cartridge is sitting there inside its package, which is quite good. Then we've got all the user guides, so we've got here the um, basic level 3 manual, and if you want to learn basic, uh, this was quite good. I had a good look through it and it seemed pretty well written, which is interesting. But this one here is the most interesting one because this was written by Grandstand, who were the distributor for the SC3000 in New Zealand. And in here they talk about the first line is computer, friend or foe. Uh, and then it goes on about, you know, computers are becoming, you know, they're being used for education and hobby and games and they go on and sort of talk about how they could be used for maths, geography, spelling, reading, game programming, study, design and pattern generation, record keeping, same old thing I guess that was told to everybody in the uh, 1980s. But they go into a little bit of detail about you know how to plug in um, it into a colour television, some of the ports on the back, um, you know, and then into a little bit of basics. So, you know, fairly good guide. Then I have here a couple of pamphlets. So, you know, the friendly computer introduction for new users for the Grandstand Sega. And it just talks about, you know, your friendly computer for home, for education, keyboard sprites, you know, the whole thing is talked about here. And a software preview just talks about some of the cartridges that you can get for Congo Bongo and Star, you know, Star Jack and all those types of games that you could get for your SC3000. But I think the reason why it was most successful in New Zealand is because of these. And the one that I got happened to come with a whole lot of original um, Sega computer magazines. And you can see here, it says for the official Sega User Club magazine. And there are articles galore here about, you know, program listings, um, different boxes you can get, control stations, all sorts of things in here that you can get. And I think the community was part of the reason why the SC3000 did so well in New Zealand and uh, also in Australia. And the last but not least is the 
grandstand power supply so uh, for the SC3000 uh, the power supply itself is just a just looks like a standard 9 volt um, DC uh, adapter but um, there was a box for it so um, actually probably lastly is this sheet which gives a little bit of setup detail on how when you first get your SC3000 out of the box sort of how to plug things in which plugs where uh, all those sorts of details so quite a lot of documentation um, quite friendly I guess for people who you know first picked up the SC3000 uh, for home and uh, took it home and you know, got quite a bit of stuff with the um, with the product